this is the last episode of Collider Jedi Council ever. Just kidding. Just this year. Last one we're going to be doing, and it's a doozy. We're going to be doing it with you guys, commenting like crazy people. However, if you have not seen this little film called Rogue One, you should not watch this episode. So if any of you guys write, I let up, that's a spoiler, <laughs> then that means you can't read. Because <laughs> in the beginning of this, it says spoiler review, spoiler discussion. So guess what? We're spoilers, doing it. Thank spoilers, you. Spoilers. 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 There's going to be spoilers. And, spoilers. and spoilers. what a crew we have. I got Spider-Man covering his ears in the background, and it is time to introduce first the Smith Lord. Tiffany Smith is here. Hello. I'm happy to be here and talk about Rogue One, and there's going to be spoilers, guys. Over there on that side, that's Mark Yodi Riley. Hey, guys. I'm happy to be here, and there's going to be spoilers for Rogue One, right? Yep. And yeah. joining us. His triumphant return, the end of the year. It's Boba Schnepp. John Schnepp is here. <laughs> spoilers! We're <laughs> talking about spoilers! That's right, a lot, of, a lot of spoilers. And that's the first yeah. time I've heard Boba <laughs> Schnepp. That is brilliant. Yeah, I like it's it. It's pretty good, right? Yeah. All yeah. right, so here, so we've got a review of. Uh, this movie up on the channel right now that a bunch of us did. So obviously you can go check that out. This is going to be us really diving into it, getting into certain things, whether it's uh, what we hope to see next in the franchise, what we thought this particular really worked for this uh, movie in general. So we're going to get into it now. So if you have not seen Rogue One, you shouldn't be checking this out as someone just walked into the office who hadn't seen Rogue One. I want to make sure they get the hell get out of here. here. <laughs> All right, let's get into this thing. So uh, Cody, if you haven't seen it, cover your ears. All right. So the first thing I think that you have to, or the thing that's been bothering me on these reviews so far, because what I will tell you guys for me, I enjoyed this movie. I don't think I loved it as much as everyone else did. I still haven't seen it a second time. I want to go back and watch it again. I really liked the movie. What I really liked about it, and I've talked about this, I really liked the way Darth Vader was used. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I've seen complaints out there that Darth Vader wasn't in it enough, that Darth Vader wasn't part of the movie. and Darth Vader, It's not a Darth Vader story. It's not a Darth Vader story. I had a conversation with a friend who was saying, well, I would have liked to have seen him on the, at Scarif fighting. No, absolutely not. If he's on the beach fighting like Battlefront, it, yeah, it, it's going to show how powerful he is. But then all you're talking about is Darth Vader. And that's kind of all we're talking about right now because the ending is so powerful. Yeah. What he does with those plans when he shows up and the saber pops out and he's just wrecking dudes left and right. You're saying that's brilliant. That's the way to use him. Putting him in Vader's mm -hmm. castle. I thought Vader's castle was interesting. Throw back to the comics. All that stuff was just done very well. So I love the way Vader was used. That is not a problem I am going to have with this movie at all. I thought it was effective. I thought that it, it, is, it was scary. And I thought mm -hmm. that tie-in to show him why he's so pissed off in episode four is indicative of that particular scene. I love it. Am I crazy? No, you're not crazy. You know what? The one, there's one thing that bothered me about the, the two Vader appearances the first Vader appearance, like he said, like I find your lack of faith disturbing, and these other kind of cool lines. When he did that choke pun, yeah, very Arnold. Yeah, Arnold should have done that. We didn't need to, we did we don't need Vader kicking out puns and jokes, yeah. but it made up for it that end sequence where it ties into the sequel, Rogue Two, called A New Hope. Yeah. Um, it is the most fantastic way of making Star Wars A New Hope that much more powerful. The the Rogue One story actually lends so much more credibility to why that flaw in the Death Star exists, mm -hmm. what the Rebels did that, yeah. in that opening crawl. To me, I watched Rogue One, the despecialized version, I watched that one a day after I saw Rogue Rogue One. I watched the Star Wars A New Hope, and it, it's, it's so flawless and smooth, it flows right in, right from that attack with Darth Vader mm -hmm. to why he's so angry, and I want those plans. It's, it keeps all that element, the elements and emotions alive. So for me, Darth Vader was not a problem at all, and I had just enough of him in the film. We had enough of him for six movies. Uh, yeah. It was, the, it was the, the story of Darth Vader happened right. I, didn't want, I wanted him, I thought he was just as effective in this the way he was in Rebels. Tiffany? I completely agree. I think that if we'd seen a lot more of him in this movie, that last final scene would not have had the impact that right. it did have. And I think that, you know, I remember us talking about Rogue One and thinking, oh, wouldn't it be cool if Galen, like, put something in there that was a flaw? And then that is actually mm -hmm. what we get to see happen. And that part I loved so much. I think that this movie 
is such a great fan service film. I think there were so many moments seeing it at the premiere where people cheered, moments that I think will kind of skate by a lot of people, which is fine. It doesn't it doesn't ruin the film in any way. Um, but I, I 100% agree. I think that Vader's use was perfect. And this is not a Vader film. We talked about that when we were leading up to this movie, just saying we don't want too much of him because it's not a film about Vader. It's really about all these other characters because we get it in the next film. Yeah, and I think that one of the things here, Riley, is that had they just had that castle scene, mm -hmm. that was all we saw, I think then I would have been disappointed. But I agree with Tiffany that because the way that we do end the movie, that mm -hmm. does tie in so well, it shows us the anger of Vader, but it also shows Tyson 1986. Right. Um, that, to me, satisfied my crave of what I hoped I was going to get. I totally agree with you. I was completely satisfied with the use of Vader because if you use Vader too much, it takes away from our rogues, our rebels, and we don't care as much because we're focused on Vader. We're looking for the, his next, if he's here and he's doing his you know, battlefront on the beach at Scarif, then it, it, we're gonna care less about it. I just think it would take away from the story. So everybody had those questions. How are they gonna use Vader? How are they, like we all hoped he would do exactly what he did at the very end. And it set up, that's what it did. It set up beautifully New Hope, because I said it before, walked right in home, put on New Hope, and it just enhanced that experience. When Vader walks in, you're like, oh my God, I knew yeah. exactly what was going on. However, what I will say that was so satisfying was they absolutely expanded the mythology on Darth Vader by showing the castle, yeah. showing mm -hmm. where Darth Vader is in the back to tank. That mm -hmm. was amazing. Turning to me. out that that mold that we saw going around was indeed it, it, right. Right. It was that. Yeah. It was kind of teased. I kind of figured it, but I loved finding out. It was kind of very similar to what he was in, like maybe the meditation chamber in Empire Strikes Back, and you see just the head for the first time. In this, mm -hmm. you just see a glimpse, kind of in the back to tank. I love that. I love that the castle is there because that is an old Ralph McQuarrie oh, yeah. concept art that finally made it. They tried to do it for Empire. It finally made it in a Rogue One. So you get a little bit mm -hmm. more of Vader's full character, full story. And that's what I loved. All right. Yep. So the way we're going to kind of run this whole panel is we're going to take things from that we liked and we didn't like and have this is, like you said, a discussion episode here. So okay. we're going to throw things. So I start with thing I like. Now I'll start with thing I dislike. And then we'll do kind of go around sure. the like and dislike. Um, so dislike for me, one of the dislikes that you've seen if you've been watching any of the reviews I've been on or even my tweets. Um, I was not a fan of Giacchino's score at all. I mean, at all. Now, what I will say starting off with this is that the man had four weeks or something to work yeah. with. He had he replaced this plot, came in there, and, and there you go. But that's why I think if you're going to do that, if you're going to replace somebody, why not go with tried and true and go, go with, uh, with Kevin Kiner? I mean, Kevin Kiner, obviously, from, from Clone Wars and from Rebels, he did a perfect meld of you had the John Williams things plus his own original things. This here and there had it. I thought it was a missed opportunity. It was the birth of the Empire, really, on film for us to see. Obviously, you see it in uh, Attack of the Clones for briefly, but the, the Empire that we know, you see it in Rogue One. You see it. Dun, 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 dun. It should have been there. That you should have felt that every time because it would just. I think it would have made it more impactful because I know your argument is the first time in Episode Four that you see it. It hits you like a brick. But I think a lot of people might be seeing Rogue One for the first time and to introduce mm -hmm. it and then it's reoccurring when you see Episode Four might be that much more powerful. So little things like that. I also thought it was felt more science fictiony some of this stuff too. Like there's one I've been talking to you about it. Ben Mendelsohn's ship comes in and it's like it's like so booming and <laughs> like it just didn't feel I, I was so taken out by some mm. of it that I, I really it really bothered me. And I know that I'm in the minority. I get it, but I'm a big score guy. And I, I just I want it to me, the John Williams score Star Wars, the score in Star Wars is as important as Han Solo is, as mm. Chewbacca is. It is a character. Sometimes people are like, oh, it's serviceable. It, it, Star Wars, you can't get away with just serviceable. I would say that most people on this table are not going to remember a lot of things about that score. For the most part, it's forgettable. Mm. Schnapp, what do you think? Well, let me ask you this. I mean, for me, the score didn't bother me. And I also, we were, we argued a little bit about this. We discussed it, but we, yeah. you know, we were a little... We punched each other in the Yeah, nuts. we were punching each other, really. Yeah. Oh, about, like, how you were like, I wanted to hear that emp Empire, that dun-dun. And I was like, no, I, I'm glad they saved it, because 
in the future, when people watch this, they're gonna watch Rogue One, then see Star Wars A New Hope, and then see The Empire Strikes Back. So when that theme comes in and carries through all the rest of the movies, See what I'm saying? I, I yeah, just but feel that's like, my. But I think that you like could introduce much. it. I, well, I think you could introduce it there first. Or just even like, I, if they were to split the difference, maybe a couple of notes. But I think what the other thing was, he didn't want to j borrow too much from John Williams and to keep his impact s solely in the John Williams score. So, I can't remember what Jin Erso's score or theme was. Right. It, mm -hmm. Does she have that's one? That's my problem. Yeah. That's okay. my. That's my problem because okay. I, I, I agree with you. I understand that line of thinking to where it's like, well, maybe he wanted it to stand out. It didn't stand out. But how do you feel about it? I. I, I'm curious because I know that he came in late. Um, and so I don't know what that looks like for a composer where it's coming in on stuff that somebody already has worked on and how much time you actually have to change stuff or what it sounded like before. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a way less desirable position when he walked in and he did as much as he could do to get yeah. it into a better place. Um, I will say that I didn't have moments like I did in The Force Awakens where, you know, that that I always go back to that moment where Ray slides down the hill and you just hear the music and it just gets you emotionally. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any musically moments in this film that did that for me in that way. Yeah, I mean, and to be fair, when I saw The Force, and I know that people are probably commenting on this right now, but to be fair, I didn't like the John Williams theme for episode seven right away when I saw it, but I will say that I reckon that that Ray theme mm -hmm. and Kylo Ren stuck out to me right away. Nothing mm -hmm. stood out to me in this film. Riley, we're on opposite sides here. Well, uh, we're, we're kind of on op uh, opposite sides. I can see what you're talking about. I was surprised though, because I didn't have a problem with it. It did feel like Star Wars music to me. Mm -hmm. However, I will, I have notes, I do. I thought there, <laughs> I thought there were a lot of missed opportunities and it, it bummed me out in that sense because in one sense, right when Jin gets the kyber crystal put around her neck, you put the Force theme yeah. in there. You do. You, that attaches itself to the mythology of the Force into the kyber crystals, which we all know. And it would have been a nice moment because the Force theme elevates the emotions, and mm -hmm. that is such a powerful emotional thing happening, mother saying goodbye to her daughter. So why not the Force theme? There was a lot of that. I totally agree with you. When the mm -hmm. Star Destroyers and the Death Star are shown, you play the Imperial March. You do. You just do. I'm with you on that. However, I, I, I'll pull back a bit. I think it worked. It did absolutely work for me. <laughs> you know, even that. Even <laughs> this. Yeah. It well, did. Look, a lot look, of it worked for me. Nothing. I just, I'm wondering if he, if he had more time, maybe, mm -hmm. but that it just, his brother originally came to him and said, he, well, first he said, I, I don't have enough time to score this thing. His mm. brother said, you've been scoring this thing for your entire life. You love John Williams and Star Wars, so you should do it. I thought it paid off. Uh, I, I want to give him more time because maybe I then agree. you won't have that I think feeling. That's fair. But, I think that's fair. But I mean, it, I'm he, down he the middle on those, he had uh, those weeks. two things. The man yeah. had four weeks. A, so it was, a it was... redo on the Giacchino Giacchino. score. Giacchino. 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 Is that, is that <laughs> how you say it? Giacchino? Giacchino. 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 I'm just saying, what if they were like, look, we're doing a special re a remastered remix, and we gave them like another three months, brand new music. I know. I, 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 it's, it's hard for me to be too critical on somebody who's got four. I have to the soundtrack on its own, though, because maybe just listening to it on its own. You have listened to it? No, I have not. But what I'm saying is I just saw the movie one time. Time, I was blown away by the movie, let alone just being able to mm -hmm. soak in the music and stuff. Yeah. So. yeah. All right, Tiffany, let's shift over to you. Give me something, a moment that you would like to talk about you thought really stood out. Uh, moments. Anything. Moments that stood out for me. I loved everything about K2SO in this movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I know before I saw the movie, I kind of came in and was like, I know K2SO is going to be my favorite droid. I love him so much. Tell your sister <laughs> you were right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's such a standout character in this. And I don't know what it is about droids in the Star Wars universe, but it's like every time we get a new droid, whether it's BB-8 or K-2SO, they nail it. They make them so lovable and interesting, and he's such a great balance of some of the other droids that we really like, but mm. still feels very unique. And, you know, w where he is an Imperial droid that's been reprogrammed, and that moment where he sacrifices himself to mm. help save everybody, it was just like... It that was one of the emotional moments that I had in the movie and just an emotional connection. And those were the standouts for me. I think there was a scene in particular where Jin is seeing the hologram of her dad and mm -hmm. hearing his story and just watching her face. It was a moment for me where I was like, they hired great actors. She said nothing, but you felt everything. So those two moments for me were really big standouts. Both those are, are key elements that I loved as well because K2SO reminded me a little bit of HK47 totally. from the Repu mm -hmm. Republic series. Uh, he was the character I, I liked 
the best. He was a character I thought was developed the mm -hmm. most, um, and he was the one that I cared about the most when he died. I agree. Um, I was so bummed out when 2K. Yeah, died. but you knew it was coming. And I, I know. said the reference I've been giving it reminded me of Terminator 2 at the end when the Terminator yeah. died, yeah. and and he was sacrificing himself. It felt like that. I almost I wish that Brad Fidel's score was playing at that moment. It was so great. Um, yeah, because his and his humor was. Perfect. Mm -hmm. His humor wasn't forced. It wasn't Cat Denning's store forced. humor. It was, yeah. It was. It really worked well. As far as that Felicity Jones scene you're talking about, that's why you hire Felicity Jones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That particular scene when and and what's so pivotal about that particular scene is when that message is out there. That's the plot. Yep. That's the main thing. That's her shifting from going. Wait, this this is a purpose here, and it's also the thing about the relationship with her father. Mm -hmm. It was it was the best storytelling in the entire film, I thought, and the best moments from her, for sure. Yeah. Riley? Uh, it, as far as moments, I'll expand on Felicity Jones's character. I really, really, it got me her, Jen and Cassian's relationship. Right to the very end, I was close to tears because I thought it was so well done. From Cassian being a kind of a gray character in the Rebel mm -hmm. Alliance and doing the hard things that he had to do to the butting heads with Jen when she gets that, that communique from her dad and what it does to her and her then wondering what is he up to, to it come to it, the end, whew, it, it, had, it was a gut punch to see them together was fantastic. It yeah. got me because I could talk about the space battles and, mm -hmm. and Vader just wrecking rebels, <clears throat> but those two were the emotional heart that really got to me. And of course, K2SO, yeah. he was my favorite. So. Schnapple or Rusk? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you could see the movie Deep Impact, and it has a very oh, similar yeah, right? ending. I was like, thinking like the same thing. Looking at the beach and stuff. But this is so much more powerful because, to me, my favorite part of the entire film is the last, like, 30 minutes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. When we go into what yeah. the traditional breakup of the three-point, you know, action scenes, we're in outer space, we're on we're on land, and then we're in, like, this kind of tower system. We're cutting back and forth. And the and it was such a dire situation, even though I know the ending. I know the yep. plans, get because I've seen all the other yeah. movies. You know what I mean? I, but you're rooting for them. You're like, how? How are they going to get out of this? You don't know if they're all going to make it. And as each of each one of them slowly get picked off, 2SFO is the one where, like, oh, my God, everyone's going to die. That was a really emotional moment for them because you know they're going to die. Yeah. They're watching that horrible Death Star happen, you know, the, the whatever the giant tidal wave of mm -hmm. death coming towards them. <laughs> yeah. But you also see the plans going up to the, I guess it was the Tantive Four. Yeah. Um, yeah, to me, that entire last 30 minutes was rousing. And also just, I mean, for myself, some of my favorite moments, 2KSO, I favorite character. I bought the giant figure before I saw the movie because yeah. I was like, this droid is going to kill it. Yep. And he did. And I he really actually helped me get through some of the like plot or uh, I'd say story elements that I found a little bit slow. He'd throw in a joke. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is a perfectly yeah. timed joke because that was necessary. But for me... Um, I love the story. I love how much uh, the textures and layers that it adds to all the rest of the Star Wars movies. Now to know that it wasn't just some dumb ex exhaust pipe. It was actually all part of the yeah. plan. It makes it so more intelligent. Mm -hmm. And it, it just puts all the stakes on, like, you gotta, you got to use the Force to get that thing because that was built. That's the main weakness. Well, isn't this the beauty of some of these standalone films is that if there were these particular holes in any of the stories that they're able to Fix patch them. up, they can yeah. patch up. Yeah. And because that's always, been, that's always been one of the... The, the main things. Why would they design this thing? Well, it was done on purpose. Now. Yeah. Right. So now, Space Wizards was yeah. that one cartoon. That was now, going when around. you see, now when you say that, you're like, well, there was a reason. It was yeah. engineered that way. So th that's the type of stuff that they can do now that really works. There might be some stuff that we find out in the Han Solo movie that they're able mm -hmm. to patch some stuff up. Who knows? I think there's a lot of damage that was done in the prequels that they'll never be able to to patch up. But whatever, um, they can do it now. But let's go into a negative real quick because I want to I want to kind of go because this is a shorter special today. Before we do negative holiday plans, I'd, let me. Just add because yes. I didn't get to add some of the flavor the little Easter eggs that are not really oh, yeah. Easter eggs they're like oh, yeah. the, when they mention the wills or when she bumps into the There's walrus man and like, watch where you're going right. of yeah, yeah. blue milk the blue, blue milk no, just no. little things like that the, the rebel pilots coming back cheering out loud those Logan rebel Riley. pilots show yeah, up God. I lost my mind yep. yeah. I was like and it didn't smash wonder, you over the head no. yeah. it was it wonderful it made perfect yeah. sense yeah. gold leader we were both me and Riley were like yeah we are like the only people in this entire the two people between us were like what are these nerds doing Right. Yeah, Tiff. So give me something that, that you thought was terrible. Uh, I don't know if <laughs> I would say it's terrible. <laughs> um, two things in particular. One, I love Donnie Yen. I yeah. think that he was such another cool character that 
was one of the more developed ones. Mm -hmm. But the fight with the stormtroopers. Why are they? How does he beat them up with a stick? Like it looks really cool. But I just don't get it. And if I think about it too much, Didn't if like I have to analyze it, yeah, like through? if yeah. I have to say, like, I was talking with Chad about this and he was like, I was like, well, like, he's tuned into the force. So maybe the force is flowing through his staff and makes him super strong, which maybe if I have to do that, I that yeah, was one of my eh, yeah. mo- moments. Um, and for me, I walked out and I think that some of the flaws that people saw in The Force Awakens was that they were like, oh, the story just feels a little like less developed, but you felt super connected to the characters. This one, for me, I feel like it was a little bit of the opposite, where the story was really interesting and intriguing, but I didn't feel that moment at the end with them when everything's exploding and they're about to die. I I just was like, okay, like, I don't know, maybe that makes me cold and heartless, but I just feel like we didn't get as much development of those characters and i almost wish like i was thinking about what could what could have made it better Mm -hmm. for me i wished that they were working with saw guerrera already and so it was this team that was already put together and then they find out this piece of information and then they go because it's like then they already have this connection to each other um which also brings me to i feel like the saw guerrera stuff was really theatrical it really took me out of it over the top it really took me out of it I I will say that I like that they had to go ahead and find they're like the seven Sam or the Magnificent Seven. You had to find these different people, and I I found that that journey part of you know fitting it in with getting the plans, her meeting her dad, it worked for me. I, I can understand exactly why you would feel a little uh, le- less connected to it, but I did connect to it. Yeah. The thing that took me out of the movie completely was Grand Moff Tarkin and the Uncanny oh, really? Valley. Let's yeah, for me, yeah. it almost ruined the movie because wow. like, really? I could tell yeah. instantly that it was a fake person, and I was like. Just like Tron Legacy, the Im- the imagery is just a little bit better, but at least for me, I could tell it was like a video, it was like a cinematic cutscene from Red Dead Redemption talking to a real life person playing Krennic. So for myself, hmm. every time they cut to close-ups of Grand Moff Tarkin, I was like, I, got, I just got taken out wow, of the movie. It's funny you say that, because I actually feel the exact opposite. I think in the beginning of it, um, I could see it. That was the most noticeable. But I thought it was revolutionary as far as the way that they started to design it because there mm-hmm. are a couple scenes I couldn't tell. There's, I mean, the, the first scene, I mean, I was sitting there with my wife, and she's not a fan at all. Uh, doesn't even, didn't even know, uh, uh, she's not a big film fan. Mm-hmm. So I'm, next, I'm next to her. People start going crazy at the premiere that he shows up. Yeah. And she goes, was he in the first movie? Oh, yes, but he's dead. <laughs> and she's, yeah. like, she goes, she's like, wait, what? And I, yeah, she's like, that's he's, that's not really him. She couldn't tell. Yeah. So I think because we were looking for it and no, we knew right honestly, away. Honestly, though, it's also because like I do graphics and things like that. I don't know if I'm just I, more I, tuned I in that. I, 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 I think that's fair. I think that from, but when I was watching this thing, I mean, it better. And because the thing is, Tarkin had to be in this movie mm-hmm. in this role. He just had to be. So either you take someone else and ask the audience to say, that's your brand new Tarkin, or you take a shot. They took the shot, and for me it worked. For you it did not, but Riley? Oh, it worked. Yeah. It worked yeah. for me. I, I'll, I'll start off, Schnepp, I could totally see it because there is that moment when Tarkin comes in. I geeked out. Mm-hmm. I lost my mind. My girlfriend did the same thing. She said, what, what? You know, she's, <laughs> she's fans of the movie, but now, like, in, when we come home and watch New Hope, she's like, <gasps> you know, and has that moment. But I'm like, this is a character, this is Peter Cushing who is dead, and now he's on screen. She went, wow, which she had probably the right. same reaction. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and that ties into Leia also. Did and you know it's, that, it, well, oh, Leia got me. See, Leia, big that's... time. Goosebumps on that one. Leia. Tarkin, I was fine with. Leia, for whatever reason, that last scene, I was like, I wish she hadn't said anything. I I, I, I'm with you on that. I didn't like it. Far away. The- I, here's my big complaint. Look, I mean, whether you you believed it or not, like, I didn't believe it, they could have get, given some of those lines to someone else who was real, and Grandma Tarkin could be far away and not close-ups, because when he was talking, yeah. just, I'm going to get a little technical, the mouth bag and certain yeah. things, like, any CG people are going to, like, be on my side, right. I think. But get I, in the see comment that. Section. I understand where you're and, and, and saying point of view, for that, sure. like, I get, and I also get it from Disney's point of view, because in five years, they can remaster this, yeah. and right. when the technology, when the Uncanny Valley is broken, you know, and we're like, everybody looks yeah. human now. Right. It's not just cars. When John Wayne's in movies, basically. Yeah. Did you yeah. feel that way about the Leia one, I though? did. Yeah. Every time the CG characters came in, it's just my instant, like, it's not real. I could tell there's a death Yeah, it's face. still the trick. It's, it's, yeah. it's still the trick. Yeah. It has, it's certainly not perfected yet. But uh, on your point on Tarkin having to be there, Princess Leia had to be there for that direct connection with the Tan of Four and right. that yeah. 
They, and it was great. The only thing I will agree with, I didn't like her line. I thought the line what was. What was the line again? Oh, uh, this is at least our hope. We, have, we yeah. have our hope. And I was like, mm, yeah. I don't need Speaking that. Of but of, I we, loved it. We do have to wrap it up pretty yeah. soon. But one of the scenes that I have to mention that I thought was like, to me, when I, when I audibly was like, no, don't do that, was the Bail Organa Mon Mothma scene, when, which I loved. And then when they when they met up in the middle and they and they had that little conference hallway like a very like a, like a scene out of WWE when they're meeting up in the hallway and and it's like they started talking about well what about this let's send this person let let's do that and then he's like what about your Jedi friend and I'm like yes and then he's like I'll meet you on Alderaan no, no don't yeah. go to yeah. Alderaan yeah. didn't you see also the other he movie said, I know. <laughs> he said she. Well, he's talking about his daughter. He's talking about the daughter. I know, but yeah. Jedi friend. I no, was no, no, like, no, 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 because first, because the, well, ref, the reference first was to Obi-Wan. the Jedi, and then it was talking about someone that you can trust with with Ben these Kenobi. Guys, and he's talking about his daughter. He's talking about Leia. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah Leia's going to go to saying... Ben Kenobi yeah. to give him yeah, the yeah, message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's yeah. where there was a little bit of uh, Princess Leia's theme that came up on that right. mention, and right. that's that's Giacchino. 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 Yeah. And uh, that that really got me, and that's again why some of the reasons I like the score. You know, when you pronounce it wrong, mm. who are you <laughs> doing? Uh, what is that? Exactly. That's weird. I, I, I feel like it's funny because even though there was stuff that, and I, it's interesting because being these reviewers and people who go see them early, you have to see it multiple times because I have to take into account that it was a premiere mm. and you go in and there's all this energy and then you walk in and you're like, this is gonna be the best thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Right. And either you walk out feeling that way. Or you walk out and you're like a little bit like it's New Year's where you're like, okay. Like. Well, here, let, let me ask you, did all of you instantly want to see it again? Yes. Yes. That's because yeah. that's how I felt. Yeah. Even with those those irritations for the CG for yeah. me, those CG characters, I was like, the rest of the movie was so energetic and like got me that last 30 minutes. I was like, I cannot wait to like, see I it. I couldn't yeah. breathe with no, those last look, 30 minutes. It, I think you can argue, if we, did a, if we did a special of top 10 or top five moments of Star Wars history, there's arguments made that some of the Rogue One stuff's going to make it into yep. the top scenes. five. I mean, look, the Vader, the Vader thing pops in there for me is one of the top mm-hmm. five moments in Star Wars history. Absolutely. I mean, just because you got to see, you heard about it. We never, we thought we were going to get some of that in the prequels. We didn't. Yeah. We saw it in Rebels, but now you saw it in uh, in Rogue One. Plus, yeah. in A New Hope, now you see why those guys are so afraid yeah. at the door. Yeah. They're yeah, like, absolutely. he's coming. You yeah. know, yeah. it's like it, it, it adds to the myth. Yeah. Um, there's so much more that we that we couldn't get to today. We're at a little bit uh, lack of time here, if you will, but. It was a lot of fun talking Rogue One with the crew. This is the last show for sure. Leave all the thoughts you want to. You can spoil away, have spoiler-heavy discussions, things that you loved, things you didn't like, things you hope to see in the franchise. For me, I'm looking forward to seeing what Han Solo brings, Mm -hmm. if they're going to do a Boba Fett movie, which I think they probably will now. Not a big fan of it. And I think that also we're getting an Old Republic movie. But that's Mm. me. Let's everybody else sign off. Hey, Mark, Yodi, Riley, where can they find you? Find me at Riley around on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you in 2017. Boba Schnapp. Hey, you can find me waiting for that Boba Fett movie and also celebrating (laughs) Life Day on Instagram and Twitter at John Schnapp. The smithiest of Smith Lords, Tiffany Smith. You guys can find me at Tiffany's Tweets. And one final thing I will say, if you have a chance, read Catalyst before you go see this movie. But moral of the story being... The movie is awesome. Go see it. I'm going to see it again with my family on Christmas. So, mm. I will be going to see it as well, and I think that I want to even do like a follow-up video for myself to see what my thoughts are now that I've seen it again because I had different thoughts the second time I mm-hmm. saw The Force Awakens, so to be fair. And I, and if I'm a hypocrite and I come back and say, look, I like the <laughs> Giacchino score. Thank you for saying it right. I will absolutely say it in my next video. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for supporting Jedi Council. Mm -hmm. Share it. Do all that stuff. And if you missed the big Star Wars battle between John Campia, Ken Knapsack, Freddie Prince Jr., and Sam Witwer, controversy aside, go and check it out. Leave a comment. Go watch it. And we'll see you next year. May the Force be with you. Always. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.